An attack on one is an attack on all. That's what NATO's Article 5 says. It's a simple but powerful concept and it embodies why one of America's greatest sources of strength is our alliances. They're not only important to us, they're important to the rest of the world. In the entire history of NATO, Article 5 has only been invoked once to stand with the United States of America after we were attacked on 9-11. The whole world knows if any adversary were to attack us, our NATO allies would have our back. And they know we would have their backs as well. And that's why what the former president said was so dangerous. He said he would encourage Russia to, and I quote, do whatever the hell they want, end of quote. A statement heard around the world that does nothing but encourage bad behavior. After Putin's most fierce opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, died in a Russian prison last week, the former president, Trump, and other Republicans refused to hold Putin accountable for his death. Instead, Trump said Navalny's death made him realize how bad America is. He said, and I quote, we are a nation in decline, a failing nation, end of quote. Why does Trump always blame America? Putin is responsible for Navalny's death. Why can't Trump just say that? Putin's responsible. We have to stand up to Putin and pass the national bipartisan bill, the national security bill, supporting Ukraine as they defend themselves against Putin's vicious onslaught. The Senate's already acted. It's time for the House to act now because the votes are there. The Speaker needs to call a vote and abide by the will of the House. A clear majority supports what the Senate supports. So we can stand with Ukraine and send them the supplies they need to defend themselves and prove to the world once more America can be relied on. We stand strong with our allies. We have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. We keep our commitments. Listen to this. We never walk away from our friends. And we sure as hell don't bow down to Vladimir Putin. Oh, I'm first of all, uh, bingo, bango, whoever said um, lots of edits rock. Well done. Let me let me just bring this back up for one second. Uh, 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 th- this is I mean, like I, I'll, I'll keep talking about it because I was fortunate enough to have a grandmother that lived to uh, I was going to say 301, 103 years old. Uh, towards the end of her day, she was she was she was totally senile. This is the look that she had in her eyes. Look at that. Look at attack this. on glazed, one. glazed. One is an attack on all. Reading, I mean, he's doing his best to read off a teleprompter. He looks like Will Ferrell when Will Ferrell, uh, you know, is playing a character of a demented old man. That's what NATO's Article Five says. It's a simple but powerful concept. Notice that there is not. I mean, I think there might be. Uh, one segment of this video that's longer than six seconds, but shorter than 10 seconds until an edit. You know why? I want to see the outtakes. And it embodies edit. why one of America's greatest sources of strength is our alliances. They're edit. not only important to us, edit. they're important to the rest of the world. In the edit. entire history of NATO, Article 5 has only been oh, this is a five once seconds to stand uh, with the United edit. States of America. Now, some of these might just be edits between two cameras. Uh, but a great many of them, I'm, I, I, we think we've vomited enough. A great many of them are uh, edits because, look, dude, I know what I do when I get in my car and I make sentences and sometimes I need to splice one sentence where I started it off well and splice it with a sentence where I ended it well. I also know when there's not one damn sentence that was started and ended in, in one breath with this demented old man who can't string together a coherent sentence for the life of him. And I'm telling you this, I didn't start off with this belief. I, for the amount, the propaganda that the West is now waging subsequent to the death of Navalny, I now genuinely believe, suspect, or think it's not entirely implausible at all that the, I won't say Biden, because the dude can't, dude can't do anything, but the Biden administration, the deep state, CIA, intelligence, had Navalny killed. The, he was a CIA asset. These things are not totally outlandish, but to see the degree to which it's being milked and bilked, send another 60 billion. We have to now. He just killed Navalny. We have a bipartisan in the Senate deal to send more money. You have to. They just killed Navalny. Trump bad. Why won't Trump criticize Putin for having killed Navalny? The amazing thing is the pure confession through projection in all of this. And Nancy Pelosi said it the other day, and I think I talked about it yesterday. (laughs) They won't. He, why won't he criticize Putin? Putin must have something on him. Biden's doing the same thing. Why won't they criticize P- Putin? Hey, why won't anybody criticize Zelensky? Oh, of course you can't because he's, you know, Jesus reincarnated in the body of a cokehead 
Jewish man. Although there's some irony right there, actually. Uh, you know, Jesus, I don't want to get into theological uh, arguments. Um, yeah, no, no, can't, can't criticize Zelensky. Why? I guarantee you he's got dirt on Biden easily. So we're going to get into it earlier today. Why is it at 666 viewers on YouTube? I don't, it's stuck there. It seems to be stuck at 666. Okay, I screen grabbed that. <laughs> Oh my, why won't they criticize Zelensky? Why didn't they say a damn thing when Gonzalo Lira, call him what you want. Oh, you think he's just a stupid grifter or was a stupid grifter because he used to be a coach, a life coach, and he found that the reporting accurately from the ground might be more profitable. Or you think he was just a Russian propagandist and he was reporting inaccurately from the ground. Okay, he could be a scoundrel of all scoundrels. He was an American citizen detained and killed by or allowed to die in a Ukrainian prison. I mean, it's pretty analogous. <laughs> not a peep, not one word of criticism, critique against Zelensky or the Zelensky Ukrainian regime for having killed or allowed to die an American citizen in their jails. Why not? They, but following their logic, Zelensky must have something on the Bidens. And I guarantee you he does. Wow. <sighs> Um, yeah, it was, it was stuck on 666 for a long time. Blasphem the Almighty and straight to 6666. So um, that's it. It's, it's, it's wild. We're going to talk about a number of things today. I was like, I get up in the morning. I uh, couldn't do the show earlier today because the garage door repair person came early. And uh, when one's garage door is broken, one does not say no to the early visit from the garage door repairman. Um, and then I'm like, oh, is there going to be, is there going to be what to talk about? And then, you know, the day progresses and there's what to talk about. Boy, howdy. En tabarouette, comme on dit en français. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, by the way, so for tomorrow, uh, Kayla Pollock. And if you haven't heard her story, she's the Canadian woman who sustained a jab injury, myelitis. It's the paralysis, um, where we'll get into the details of the, of the uh, adverse reaction, but where basically the body uh, attacks the, if it's not the sheath around the nerves, it's the nerves itself. I, I will, I'm gonna just double check the, the distinction between Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS, and myelitis. If you haven't heard her story, she's a Canadian woman, uh, got a 10-year-old kid, took the jab, I, I don't remember which one it was, uh, and then got this um, adverse event that gave her paralysis. And uh, what ends up happening, as uh, you know, we've been warning, when you get into socialized medicine and it becomes cheaper to kill your um, citizens than to treat your citizens, when you have a system that's already broken that can't even treat the ones you already have, from what I understand, this victim of an adverse event from the jibby jab uh, in, you know, the government can't provide the required care, so they had offered her maids, medical assistance in dying. And I have to, you know, uh, even in private, even when I'm alone with my phone, not say certain things out loud because uh, I don't want to be put on any more lists than I probably already am. That induces uh, a rage in me that is indescribable, uh, uh, like a, a deep hatred towards the people in our government who are responsible for this. The woman does what she thinks she needs to do to, you know, meet her civic duties and then gets paralyzed from the jibby jab. It's confirmed. Apparently the doctor, there's a recording. The doctor says, yeah, a lot, this has been happening to a lot of people when she's talking about it. And then the government's, you know, well, tough nuggies. We can't, we can't help you. And it'll be cheaper for us if we kill you. So you want, you want to die? Your life is, you know, um, Nuremberg level trials. So I'm going to have Kayla on tomorrow at one o'clock. So um, that's going to be there. I didn't say the word, Stephen. I said tabarouette, which is not a swear word. That is actually the humorous and non-offensive slang. But I've, uh, I've, I've explained, for those of you who don't know, in French Canadian from Quebec, all of the swear words relate to... Um, religious symbols, religious iconography, the tabernacles, uh, the wafer, colis, all of these, Fre all of the French Canadian swear words are religious based. And ironically enough, or interestingly enough, all of the French from France swear words are all sex based. And sex is in like 
prostitutes and that type of sex, not gender-based. So, all right, anyways, so that's what's on the menu for tomorrow. So tune in for that one o'clock. Uh, permanent paralysis, that's one of the questions I have. I know that these things can sometimes get better, improve over, over time, but then the problem is in the interim, you still have um, muscular atrophy because it's, it's, it's a horrendous situation. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. On the menu for today, on the lighter note, you know, just the continued downfall of the uh, American empire. Le déclin de l'empire américain. The decline of the American empire. Trump comes out and says, uh, you know, America's in decline. Joe Biden, has, he's very offended by that. America's not in decline. It's got a demented old fool for a president who can barely walk on grass who's politically persecuting his political rivals, trying to lock them up for hundreds of years, who's already locked up political adversaries for hundreds of years and boasted about it, gives speeches that look like Hitler himself without the mustache. Um, weaponization of all aspects of the pillars of a what was civil Western society. And Biden has the audacity to turn on and say, but look what Putin did to Navalny. He locked up a journalist. Oh, sorry, that was an opposition politician. And he died in a Russian prison. And I now have strong suspicions this might have been intelligence-related death, but set that aside, even if it was Putin who allowed this guy to die in prison. Yeah, shame on Putin. Now do Zelensky. Oh, we can't do that, because, you know, Zelensky's a, a reincarnated saint. Can't talk about Gonzalo Lira, because he was an American citizen. They'll go trade the merchant of death for Brittany Griner, a basketball player out of Russia. But they'll let an American citizen, Gonzalo Lira, die in a Ukrainian prison and not say boo about it. And then take a shot at Trump for observing that America is in something of a decline. And my goodness, it had better reverse itself because if America goes bye-bye uh, as we knew it, so does freedom in the world. And so, oh, I don't, and then forget about, forget about, uh, you know, the, the, the persecution prosecutions. Then we go to the New York state, which we're going to talk about today. It's just a cool half billion dollar judgment against Trump. Victimless fraud, victimless alleged fraud. We'll get there. Letitia James, we're going to seize private assets because we have become a full communist regime in New York. That's theme number one. Get the hell out of New York. Theme number two, Russiagate 2.0. Oh yeah, yeah, remember, what better way to hide uh, Biden corruption than to just fabricate uh, or recycle the same plays over and over again. When Alex Jones was on, he said it. They used the same play over and over again. And what surprises him is they don't change it, really. Mutatis mutandis. We got Russiagate 2.0 coming up. The media running with their headline that the, not the snitch, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the whistleblower, one of the witnesses in the Hunter Biden, uh, Joe Biden, influence peddling scheme uh lied to the fbi about a story that was passed from russian intelligence so he's he's he lied after meeting with russian intelligence and i'm like i smell bullshit someone sent me the link for um dan bongino earlier today and the reason why i don't like i, I mean i need to listen to people who i believe are smarter than me and who know more than me the reluctance to do it is that i don't want it feeling like their uh, opinion their belief is influencing mine and I called it Russiagate 2.0 before I even knew that Dan Bongino had called it Russiagate 2.0. It's not a particularly original title. But this is what, like, I don't want people thinking my, I'm being influenced and just regurgitating information that I hear from others. I want to process it, digest it, and try to make sense of it myself. I hear this Russiagate 2.0. I'm like, all right, bullshit. I'm going to go read the articles. Let me go back to the indictment. Let me go back to the, um, the filing that the government just filed to deny bail to this guy. His name is Alexander... Smirnoff, as if we have no, not enough Russian jokes in all of this. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Rumble because I'm picking a fight with Wired and I think I'm right. Uh, we're going to get into that. But before we do any of that, before we do any of that, you might have noticed when we started this stream that it said this stream contains a paid sponsor. And it does, people, and it's a great one because I only have great sponsors. Hillsdale College. First of all, the day you stop improving yourself and the day you stop amassing knowledge and information and trying to become smarter and more well-versed in whatever it is. It doesn't have to be politics. It doesn't have to be history. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. The day you stop learning is the day you start dying. And the day you start forgetting what you already knew is the day you become Joe Biden. Bada bing, bada boom. 
Hillsdale College, it's a fantastic free online course. Time is our most precious commodity. And I've heard from, of course I've heard, I've heard from so many uh, that they have to spend their time wisely and improve themselves and the people around you. Now, one way to do that, you can watch Viva Fry. Another way you can do that is free online courses at Hillsdale College. History, economics, the great works of literature, the meaning of the US Constitution. Did you study these things in school? Probably not. I'm proud to say that I actually passed uh, one random online uh, US Constitution exam. I only got six on 10, so I was a little embarrassed to share my results, but I passed it. I'm not yet applying for American citizenship, but I think I'll be able to pass when I do. I'm tired of scrolling through TV shows and finding nothing but the same mind-numbing content. Uh, it's actually why I watch the likes of Bongino and others who I think are smart. That is why, this is, this is the first time I'm actually doing Hillsdale College, it offers more than 40 free online classes from most important and enduring subjects. You can learn about the works of C.S. Lewis, amazing quotes that I always pull from C.S. Lewis, the tyranny of those who do it with the blessing of their own conscience, the book of Genesis, if you want to get into the Bible, the meaning of the U.S. Constitution, the rise and fall of the Roman Republic might be more relevant today than it's ever been, or the history of ancient Christian church. Hillsdale College online courses, all available free. That's right, for free. Uh, my, one of my, I, what, I, what I think is probably the most relevant for this day and age, Constitution 101, the meaning and history of the U.S. Constitution, a 12-course lecture. You'll explore the design and purpose of the Constitution and appreciate why it is so bloody genius and more applicable now than it ever was. How could they have foreseen what they put into the Constitution? Because they knew what they left and they knew what they wanted to prevent from happening here. And what are we witnessing today? The very things that they were trying to protect the future of America against, we're seeing it seep in slowly. The course is self-paced, so you can start whenever you want. Enroll now, Constitution 101. Our country needs more Americans who understand the Constitution and can defend the freedom of the American people against the encroachments of an increasingly large and unaccountable government. Go to hillsdale.edu forward slash Viva to enroll. No cost, easy to get started. Hillsdale.com forward slash Viva to register. Just in case, hold on a second. Oh, the, the link is not, do I have it? Hillsdale.edu forward slash Viva. The link is in the pinned comment. You can never go wrong if you learn something. A day, I say a day without exercise is a wasted day and a day without learning something is a wasted day. <laughs> Boom. Oh, now, uh, where I forgot to check that we were live across all of the interwebby platforms. We are, we're live on Rumble. We're live on vivabarnslaw.locals.com. Doug... Doug Lefan or Doug Lefan with a tip, and I'm going to get to these afterwards. It says, Viva, how do members get information to get to the public? I have some with DEI hiring projections. Well, Doug, what's going to happen here, you see? I'm going to screen grab this uh, question. I'm going to email you afterwards, and you're going to you'll share it with me. And then I can give you some context. If it's not the type of stuff that I do, I don't really do the breaking news. If it's not the type of stuff I do, we will find someone to get it out to. Okay. First things first, people. Oh, and if you're new to the channel, if you're one of the, I don't know, like 20,000 people who discovered the channel last week during the Fannie Willis hearing, we start on YouTube, Rumble, and vivabarnslaw.locals.com where we have a wonderful community. Some of it's behind a paywall if you want to be a supporter, and much of it is not behind a paywall if you just want to be a member. vivabarnslaw.locals.com, 10 bucks a month or 100 bucks a year if you get the whole year at one shot. We end on YouTube... I don't know, 30, 40 minutes in typically and go exclusively on Rumble and vivabarnslaw.locals.com. When we're done on Rumble, then we go over to Locals for the after party. So that's the order of things, so to speak. And I don't even know what the so to speak added to that sentence. Okay, first topic of the day. Listen to this. When you are, what is it? The expression, you take the most flack when you're over the target. Rumble has been over the target for a very long time. I remember being a stupid, naive, wet behind the ears, short-haired Canadian running for federal office, and I get a call from that dude at W5, I don't know what his name was, and he's like, we're doing a piece on Rumble, we'd love to interview you and talk to you about um, your experience, your channel, uh, your success there. I was like, oh, well, flattery will get you everywhere, it'll get you in my front door. I, I was prepared for an adversarial thing, but I wasn't, I, I, I was still naive and stupid. In comes this W5 journalist, comes into my living room, they set up their cameras, it was you know, all cordial, all you know, wonderful. I recorded the entire thing just in case they tried to outright screw me, um, and they did, but I never needed the, the recording because they corrected their defamatory statements, maybe. But about halfway through the interview, I realized, oh shit, 
This was always intended to be a hit piece on Rumble, and they are exploiting of me as the middle person to get to a hit piece on Rumble. Then they publish their stupid journalism in which they write about the risks of an alt-right, far-right wing platform like Rumble, where people say mean things in the comments. I'm like, dude, you ever look at the comments on YouTube? I gotta tell you, I've never, I've never had my religion uh, used as a cudgel. Again, even I'm, I'm not even a religious person, but my goodness, on YouTube, oh, they'll never let you forget. Oh, like, like the comments on YouTube are just all so lovey-dovey. Yeah. Uh, halfway through the interview, the guy's like, I, you know, I saw some negative, co mean comments uh, in your comments. I was like, dude, there, there are 100,000 comments in there. You expect me to see all these things? You think people are not going to say something stupid on the internet? You think it's any different on YouTube? And yeah, all that to say, yeah, W5 question mark, because I are out of business now. They've been cut because the cream rises to the top and the poo-poo sinks to the bottom. Although occasionally the poo-poo floats to the top, in which case, whatever. Yeah, they, they've been cut. They've, they've been the object of, of cuts across Canadian media because they're rubbish, propaganda, garbage that nobody wants to watch. No one would watch it for free. Rumble has been over the target for a very long time. They've been the object of smear campaigns, uh, advertiser boycotts, and the, one of the most recent came from Wired. Wired, here, let me see, where's the, where's the article from Wired where they run a hit piece on Rumble? You, you, you think I'm gonna subscribe to this crap? Hells to the bells, no. So this is an article from January 8, is it? Yeah, it says 2024, I thought it said 2824 and I thought for a second I had gone into the past. This is an article that Rumble posted about a month and a half ago. Rumble is part of, in quote, active and ongoing, end quote, SEC investigation. Sounds very scary. The SEC confirmed to Wired that the financial regulator has launched an investigation into Rumble, a, quote, free speech. And what are they, it's, a, it's a free speech platform, Biatch's video platform. The nature and probe remains unknown, but they're going to use it to try to drive down the price of Rumble. And if you have any doubts, don't worry, I'll quell them. Rumble, the so-called sp free speech alternative to YouTube. Uh, by the way, thanks for the publicity, by the way. This is, there's an expression, any publicity is good publicity. There's also the better expression, good publicity is good publicity. Yeah, it's a free speech alternative to YouTube. Get used to it. It's the subject of an SEC investigation. According to the company, and a letter from the SEC. The SEC confirmed its investigation involving Rumble in response to a public request. Uh, in, in, oh, sorry. In response to a public records request that Wired first filed in November, seeking documents related to the company. The agency denied Wired's request on the grounds that related documents were part of an ongoing investigation, an active and ongoing quote investigation. It's all very, very suspicious. Just like that, you know. I don't know. I don't know the context, the circumstances, how Wired knew to go and ask for, you know, do, look for documents. And then, oh no, we can't give you those because they're under an investigation. Oh, we get to report on that now. Confirmation of the probe follows public allegations that Rumble inflated key user metrics, which the company denies. Because it's not true. The SEC says that the existence of the probe should not be an indication that, quote, any violations of law have occurred with respect to any person, entity, or security, end quote. Exact nature of the SEC investigation is still unknown. See, I don't know how much further we have to go down in this. How much, how much is there? Here, let's see this. Let's see this here. In May 2021, the site was reportedly valued at an estimated $500 million. In September 2022, Rumble became a publicly traded company listed on the NASDAQ as part of the, a SPAC. Uh, its valuation currently exceeds $1.2 billion. In April 2023, investment research firm Culper Research. Culper. I wonder if there's any culpability in there. <laughs> but a big bada boom. I want to know who's short selling the stock. That's what I want to know. Culper Research released a report expressing skepticism about the legitimacy of Rumble's claimed monthly active user accounts, accounts, a key metric for investors to evaluate the performance of a social media company. Culper Research, let me just screen grab this uh, recorded, said it had taken a short period. Oh, well, I guess I should have read all the way down to the article before I said it because now I feel smarter, but I didn't... Culper Research said it had taken a short position in Rumble, meaning it stands to profit if Rumble's stock price decreases. That's why I was going to copy and, and, and double check this. All right. Well, there we have our answer, people. So Culper shorts it. Culper then says, oh, we, we, we challenged something that might affect the valuation. Now, maybe they short it because they think it's false and they're just betting on their own research. Who knows? Maybe they have the likes of Wired that can publish these articles without the proper updates so that it can, in fact, have an unduly negative impact on stock price. Okay. Uh, in the quarterly earnings, 
In a quarterly earnings call following the report's publication, Rumble reported that its monthly active users declined by 40% during the first three months of 2023 from 80 million to 48 million. In a financial filing, Rumble attributed the decrease in users to its popular creators being less active on the platform in the first part of 2023. Well, 2024 is going to be quite the opposite for Rumble, and I can promise you that, and I will contribute to that. And news events slowing down following midterm elections. Yada, yada. Okay, fine. Listen to this. Investors should be especially dubious of rumors peddled by short sellers who are attempting to distort facts for their own financial benefit. We are aware of misleading claims about Rumble's monthly active users. Statistics, which we have previously disclosed, are provided by Google Analytics. Rumble spokesperson Rumore says, any suggestion that Rumble has inflated MAUs is false, as any objective person quickly realizes upon even a cursory review of the data. Hold on. Okay, I don't want to get to the update yet. Christian... Lamarco, the founder of Culpa Research, believes the change in reported users was a response to its report. That was a bit of validation in my view, he says. Okay, the first update, by the way, immediately following the publication, Chris Pavlovsky, Rumble CEO, said in an ex post that the SEC investigation was part of the playbook to try to destroy the company. Okay, before we get to the second update, let me bring that out. Uh, there was a tweet from the Wired article journalist guy who says... Let me see here. Is this it? Yeah, this is it right here. I think this will get us to the one. Okay, here we go. The market had responded accordingly, poorly, since our report that Rumble Inc. is the subject of the SEC investigation. The company has dropped nearly $200 million in value. This is a tweet from, it's no longer at this, by the way. It, traded, it was trading pre-market above seven today. I don't know what it closed at. I own zero stock in Rumble. January 11th. So they published the report. Take pride in or highlight the fact that it's actually had a negative impact on the stock. I want to know if William Turton short sold any or if he bought in at the dip. I want to know if anyone at Wired directly or indirectly had any financial interest in this story or the outcome. So he's like, oh, great. Look at that. It did, it did, uh, it did have an impact. And then, uh, look at this. Oh, I'm getting to the, uh, the update. So now I, I questioned it. I said, I uh, I, I do wonder, does anybody, any journalist there, wired itself directly or indirectly, have uh, any interest in the outcome of the story? We now know that Culper Research, the one that spread the news in the first place, uh, stood to gain financially and, and probably did handsomely with the help of their friends. Because, hey, you're doing it to an ideological adversary. Let's all get rich doing this, this hit piece takedown crap. Well, the news of the day, although you wouldn't know it from, uh, <laughs> you wouldn't know it from the article or the absence of any clean new article the news of the day this is coming from chris pavlovsky ceo of rumble hey uh william turd oh no so william turton and wired the sec concluded its investigation we sent you their closure letter yesterday but you haven't updated your story why don't you want the public to know that the investigation is over and let's go read the letter itself we've concluded the investigation as to rumble inc based on the information we have as of this date we do not intend to recommend an enforcement action by the commission against rumble inc we are providing this notice under section under the guidelines set out in our final paragraph of the Securities Act number 55, which states in part that the notice quote because you never you know the government never wants to uh, never wants to close the doors to any future persecution must in no way be construed as indicating that the party has been exonerated or that no action may be ultimately may ultimately result from the staff's investigation. So we're we're, we're not we're not proceeding anything now. We're not recommending anything proceeding, but we always want to leave the door open. So. Uh, this does not exonerate, to quote Mueller. Okay, fine. So that's the tweet. He, tweet, he tweets it out, and you'd expect them to write an article, an update. An, like a new, a new article. Because updating a two-month-old article is kind of irrelevant. I mean, in, in, in most places. Is this the article? Let's get back to the article. Let's just see what that, what that update that I didn't, that I didn't want to show you um, <laughs> earlier. Is this it? Update, that's, hold on, refresh here. Dude, wh hold on one second. Where's the second update to the story? Is, this is it. Refresh. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay, good. We got another update, people. Update from today. What's the date today? It's the 21st. Here's the update from today. Oh, my God, I hate this. This is annoying. How, how do I get rid of that? I'm not subscribing. Oh, this is annoying with their stupid ads. Archive. Let's go to the link here. Boom. Save. Archived one month ago. Oh, is it going to have the update today, though? Go all the way to the bottom. The archive linked. 
The archived link does not have the update. That's, that's interesting also. So no one's going to see their beautiful new... Here we go. Oh, I'm not touching anything. I'm not touching it. Don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Here we go. Update from today. <laughs> Sorry. Rumble sent wire. Listen to this. Listen to how they say it. They can't say that the SEC announced they're not, they don't make any recommendations. They have to say Rumble sent a letter. Rumble said what the SEC said. On February 20, interesting that they only update it today, Rumble sent wired a letter from the Securities and Exchange Commission that stated the agency had concluded its investigation into Rumble and that it did not intend to recommend an enforcement action against the company. And then they only quote this part. Quote, we are providing this notice under this guidelines, whatever. They only, they only provide the part that says they, they haven't exonerated them. They still leave the door open to suing them, but they don't quote the part where they say there is no, we're not recommending any further investigation. And they only update it 24 hours later, give or take, after Chris puts out a tweet that I promised him I would put on blast. I didn't promise that. I said, I'll help you make sure that this gets uh, on blast And I, when I retweeted it. They only do it a day later. Why? Because they're scoundrels of the highest order. And it's a war of information. It's a war for your minds not to channel Alex Jones. And... That's how they fight it. Dirty. Uh, so they're not going to write a new article saying, oh yeah, there's been a new article. Refresh it in the public conscious. They'll go update a month and a half old article that you won't even see the update if you go to the archived links. Um, and uh, who gives a crap? Because the damage is done and someone made off handsomely. I suspect Culper, Culper Research. Kay's Thoughts Palace says, Viva, are you in the U.S. as an asylum seeker? Not yet. But we'll see what happens. Thank you for the uh, super chat. All right, that's the first story. Now, um, let me see something here. In Rumble, we have a Rumble rant. Now, the question is this. I feel guilty uh, if I don't get to the cover story on YouTube. But we'll see if this, uh, if we're going to do it. A new Forbes article today claiming, quote, long COVID, end quote, is because of protein instead of clot shot is because of protein instead of clot shot. They want to claim that meat and poultry is at fault for health decline. Of course, Forbes refused commentary. Well, I ain't giving up meat, baby, so good luck with that. Uh, so the question is this, do we do... We're going to move it over to Rumble right now. I'll, it'll be a good time to end it, talking about how the MSM is out to try to screw Rumble. Screw them politically financially link to rumble. We're going to vote with our feet and we're going to vote with our dollar and we're going to vote with our eyeballs and we're going to go over to rumble. I'll put the entire stream up or at least the portions that don't overlap in a bit. Um, that's it. Donna, Don Bonk says, just imagine how bad things will get in Canada once our lefties flee to Canada after Trump wins again. <laughs> they, they ain't going anywhere. The, the reality is they want Trump in office. They just don't want to be the responsible, the ones that are responsible for putting him there. So yeah, that's it. Now, so that's the link to Rumble. It's in the pinned comment. Uh, let me give the link to vivabarnslaw.locals.com for anyone who wants to come there now instead of uh, going through Rumble. And it's, you're not cheating on Rumble if you come straight over to vivabarnslaw.locals.com because Rumble and Locals merge. So you're supporting the same entity. We're going to talk about the, um, Alexander Smirnov. <laughs> These jokes write themselves. We're going to talk about Russiagate 2.0. We're going to talk about getting the hell out of New York, and we're going to talk about whatever, whatever else we have on the list. And stay tuned. Um, this entire thing will be... YouTube gets the, 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 the leftovers. The stale leftovers. Okay, ending on YouTube.